Welcome back. We have escaped the brig by convincing the guard to let us go. And we should probably get back to saving the Federation. Since it said it was eight days until the Federation was destroyed, I wonder if you just stand here for eight days. I've opened the lockers. Try not to kill anybody. Some of these people are my friends. Although I suppose I may as well start using the past tense. I'll follow after you've used the turbo lift. I wonder if you just wait here for eight days if uh, you'll get an automatic game over. Probably not. It seems he has opened these lockers which contain our stuff. Um, if you incapacitate him, you have to search him and get a key card and do that yourself. I actually remember playing this game first. I think I got this one, albeit the floppy version, before I got the uh, 25th anniversary. That one I only ever had the CD version. But because I played this one first, I don't remember it as well. I've, of course, played through it to prepare for this Let's Play, but um, there were, like, certain locations and events that I had vague memories of, but with 25th Anniversary, I really, like, knew what, to, still knew what to do in a lot of the missions and what they were going to be about, and with this one, I really don't remember, didn't remember it that well. Also, as a kid who playing this didn't really speak English all that well. I always thought that Brights was misspelt, that it was supposed to be R-A-G-H-T-S in the title. What that would have meant, Judgment Rights, I have no idea, but again, English, not my native language. Um, I did not know of the word rites as in meaning like rituals, which is the intended meaning. Anyway, let's look around here. The floor. Yes. This seems pointless. Sometimes you get an overall room description if the cursor doesn't light up, but sometimes you get nothing, like here. This seems pointless. A locker. It is unlocked. This is where communicators are being kept. A locker. It is unlocked. This is where your tricorders and med kit are being kept. A locker. It is unlocked. This is where your phasers are being kept. I'm not entirely sure why they decided to go with three separate lockers, considering that um, you can only open them together. Might as well have just done one. A light mounted in the ceiling. Ventilation ducts. Oh god, I hope we don't have to crawl through those. Ventilation ducts. What's this over here? A communication panel. A pass card reader. This device opens the lockers when the appropriate pass card is inserted. But we don't need to do that because they were already open for us. A pass card reader. The door to the turbo lift. Alright, let's get our stuff. Actually, let's look at our characters, see if we get different descriptions. James Kirk is relieved not to be in the cell, but realizes the odds are very much against him. The odds are always against us. Mr. Spock considers a logical solution to their problem. Considering we don't even really know what we're facing yet, that might be hard. Dr. McCoy looks at the cell in disgust. Manao Shem. That he is. Got nothing to say. I guess not. The layout of this base is interesting, Captain. Its modular design makes it easier for a small security detachment to guard. The Vardane values secrecy even more than security. That may be a problem for us then. Maybe facing some guards. Jim, stop at a place where I can write my last will and testament. Heaven forbid, Bones. Well, if the entire Federation is destroyed, I don't think anybody will care. Honestly. <laughs> I'm not in a talking mood, Captain. Alright, now let's get our stuff. Phasers. 
taken. Tricorders and med kit taken. Communicators taken. All right, we've got all of our stuff back, same as in the last game. We've got our phaser set on stun or kill. Standard Starfleet phaser set for stun. Standard Starfleet phaser set for kill. Standard Starfleet science tricorder. Spock's tricorder. Standard Starfleet medical tricorder, full of all known Federation life form data. McCoy's tricorder. Communicators taken. Okay. That's kind of a weird description for that, but I guess we got our communicator back and the med kit. Standard Starfleet medical kit. More than just band aids in this little black box. Now that we have tricorders, let's tricord. I don't know. The floor is made from solid geranium steel alloy. Its structural integrity appears to have been weakened by a time-space phenomenon, but this section of floor is still strong. Interesting, that must be the uh, proto-universe phenomenon. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. I guess they're just lockers. How about the comm panel? The panel is fully functioning. It is linked to several locations on the ship, including one which is highly shielded. Interesting. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Nothing unusual. Nothing unusual. I think we can actually use the medical tricorder to scan Manau. I didn't realize the Vardain were this much into genetic engineering. The skin has been custom engineered into a light epidermal tissue. Muscle fibers are much denser than usual. A strong, viable species. Interesting analysis bones. However, we have more important things to do at the moment. Yes, I guess it's interesting that they are genetically enhanced. I guess the computer did mention uh, something about uh, illegal experiments to that uh, effect. We know, of course, why that's uh, such a big deal, thanks to a certain uh, COD. Although we also know that sometimes it works out well. Look at Dr. Bashir, for example. Um, we could try to use the communication panel. Save new game. Replaced. But I think that does not end well. Spock? I do not see the logic in that action. I recommend against using the station's communications unless absolutely necessary. Oh, I guess the game doesn't even let you. How about if we try to contact the Enterprise? Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Transmission detected in prison sector. Security forces converge on prison sector. We're being jammed. We have to disable the station's communication system if we want to contact the Enterprise. Yeah, that didn't go well. I am not entirely sure if that affects your score. Just in case, I'm going to reload. All right, let's just get out of this room. All right, this is the uh, turbo lift, and we get a diagram of the station. I guess we are currently here in detention. We also have a docking bay on the left here. Then this area, which has four rooms, central control, security, computer room, and the transporter. Then on the right, we have the executive quarters, Special projects. Docking Bay 2 does not seem to be... Uh, well, it actually doesn't seem to be finished. It's under construction, according to this map. There's uh, Burdell's quarters and crew quarters as well. Uh, 
Uh, it looks like the station is currently under yellow alert, but at least everything is okay. There's no radiation and no vacuum in any of the places that we would want to go anyway. Not sure what this is. Just looks like you can't go there because the turbo lift itself is under construction. Interesting. Um, let's go to the uh, right first. I hope this warning isn't important because you can't read it. It is just a hallway by the looks of it. The floor is marked with a tricolor grid. Indeed, and it seems to match the colors of the doors. I'm not entirely sure what the significance of that is. The floor is marked with... This seems pointless. The ceiling looks strong but cold and brutal. Just like the Vardane. Getting philosophical there, narrator. A light mounted in the ceiling. The wall looks very solid. This door is labeled Executive Quarters. Kind of already knew that from the turbo lift diagram, of course. This door is labeled Special Projects Room. This door is labeled Is Burdell. So it is Burdell Sr. and not his son. This door is labeled Crew Quarters. There is a numeric entry code next to Burdell's door. Hmm. I guess it's not going to be so easy to just walk into his quarters, then. The door is locked. And we do not know the code. Captain, we need to learn the code. It does not even let you attempt any incorrect ones. Which I guess is nice of them, but... Also means we are not getting in, not even by accident. Uh, let's just check these other rooms out, I guess. Let's start with the uh, the executive quarters. All right, some beds. Looks pretty nice. The floor. These descriptions are really um, something, aren't they? This seems pointless. A light mounted in the ceiling. An external monitor used by central control to send messages to this room. This appears to be a synthesis between a computer and a musical instrument. A cochlea. How rare. What is it? It has many uses, Bones, but it's most commonly used as a mood inducer. It emits subsonic vibrations at a wavelength that stimulates the emotional centers of the human brain. Maybe we could use it on the Vardane. The effects of a cochlean are not significant enough to radically change emotional states. If it had such abilities, logic would suggest it would have wide use as a narcotic. Well, that's one great plan that's gone down in flames. I guess not. Library monitors. These data screens provide information and entertainment for board executives. A comfortable pseudo-leather chair. A bed. A bed. This is a wall cabinet. A large potted plant is hanging from the wall. Hmm, somebody has a green thumb here. You mean to tell me there are Verdane who are interested in something other than eugenics or military conquest? The Kadashim was proof of that. Unfortunately, it cost him much. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a faux pas there, uh, McCoy. An atmospheric purifier. It is capable of removing contaminants from large quantities of air or water in less than a second. It carries the brand of the Save a Ship Manufacturing Corporation. Now, why would you need an atmosphere purifier on a space station? The filters should be built into the life support system. I suspect it could help someone with extreme allergies. Interesting. Wait, wasn't Save a Ship the same brand as the the makeshift life support system Harry Mudd was using in the last game? A food synthesizer. 
So let's also look at our crew. I think I forgot to do that on the last screen, so I'll do it when we go back there. James Kirk seems relieved to find the room deserted. Yeah, so far we haven't encountered anybody, which I guess is good. McCoy wonders if there is a medical doctor aboard this facility. Well, there is. It's him. Mr. Spock eyes the instrument on the rear wall with interest. Do you feel like performing or something? Does anyone have any suggestions? I guess not. Well, Bones, do you have any ideas? I'm not a religious man, Jim. But a few prayers couldn't hurt us right now. Spock? We should attempt to gather evidence that Dr. Burdell is planning to commit genocide. Others may help us if they are confronted with the scope of Burdell's misdeeds. That is actually a good point. Definitely something we should keep in mind. Can we use this thing over here? I do not have enough experience on the instrument, Captain. I do not believe that it would be advisable. No, but it might be funny, so why don't you try it? The database contains common entertainment and informational programs. There is no link to any of Burdell's other files. That is a shame. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. The food synthesizer is working perfectly, Captain. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. I detect what appears to be Andorian Barbicide in this cabinet. That's a rather powerful drug. I didn't realize the Vardain were into drug smuggling. This could be a private matter, Captain. Also, the Elasi are known to smuggle this drug. Jim, there is a legitimate use for Barbicide in treating severe allergies. More allergies, huh? Somebody in this room had allergies. That much seems certain. Nothing unusual about... Didn't think so, but you know. A Malboralian desert creeper. They require little water and can go months in between watering. This is quite a robust example, Captain. I wonder if McCoy can tell more about that plant. Jim, you don't suffer from hay fever, do you? Your records should show that I don't, Bones. Why do you ask? Well, somebody on the station does, and that's why the filter is set up in here. The Malborian creeper here is producing pollen at an incredible rate. I've never seen anything like it. Another Vardane improved life form. Can't they leave anything alone? Most of the time, no. Why would you have that in the, your crew quarters, then, if someone on your crew is allergic to it? <laughs> that seems kind of... Uh problematic. I guess it's okay with the filter, though. Can we take the filter? The filter is bulky, but portable. We can. Might be useful. Can we use the food sanitizer? I do not require food at this time, Captain. I guess not. How about this cabinet? I am unable to unlock it, Captain. It has a brain path scan lock. Only someone with specific brain patterns could unlock this. Alright, seems unlikely we would be able to, um... ...imitate those. Maybe we, if we get somebody's help, they will unlock it for us. A selection of bound technical printouts. One of the technicians really loves his work. I guess so. No effect. Can't take those, though. All right, let's move on. One thing that's interesting is that we have no Richard with us. It's just the three main characters. I guess they didn't think they would need one on this mission. This game also mixes up the away team uh, makeup a little bit more, so we get to see some of the other characters in action as well, which is pretty nice, compared to the previous game where they had very little to do. I said I would look and talk to the characters here. A weary James T. Kirk. Spock looks unperturbed, even with the imminent destruction of the Federation. That's just what he's like, I guess. McCoy 
wishes he was back on board the Enterprise. Don't we all? Be careful. This looks too quiet. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen any guards yet. Well, Spock, what do you suggest? We should attempt to gather evidence that Dr. Bedell is planning to commit genocide. Others may help us if they are confronted with the scope of Bridell's misdeeds. We must find out what Bridell's plan is. If we could find the central computer records, we may be able to tap into them and learn his exact plan. We need to shut down the tractor beam that is currently holding the Enterprise. Until the ship is freed, our options are limited. We should not forget that we need to be able to communicate freely with the ship. It will be necessary for us to neutralize any source of interference. Our chief priority is to find the reason for the Holocaust that was reported by the Alexander and stop it from occurring. Nice recap. I'm afraid that the social Darwinists have never impressed me, Jim. Building a better human on the inside is far more preferable to improving his physical traits. Originally, Doctor, Vardane was a very harsh environment. The Vardane claimed that the original human settlers required genetic engineering to survive. Living only to survive is a poor life indeed, Spock. I guess so. Spock is right, though. We need to find the computer. I guess that was on the other side of the station, but we might as well check out some of these rooms. This was special projects, I believe. Uh, I guess that's the special project? Seems to be behind a force field, which um, is good. It can stay there as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't look very friendly. The floor. Yes, we know. This seems pointless. This seems pointless. It would appear that Bridell has been mutating an Antarian man-killer. A most deadly creature. Well, there's another teddy bear for you, Spock. Yeah, I don't think this one wants to cuddle. A mutated Antarian man-killer. An improved version of one of the most feared animals in the galaxy. Putting improved in air quotes is definitely, uh, correct here. A large machine. It looks like the center of an experiment. Possibly. Some sort of special project controls. Very bulky with a lot of prototype components. It is currently protected by a force field. According to my tricorder, Captain, the power system for this force field originates from the security section. Alright, so we probably want to get there to disable that force field. Some sort of special project. According to my tricorder. This may have something to do with uh, Burdell's doomsday weapon, after all. So we definitely want to get access to that. We have the uh, the air filter in our inventory now. A saver ship brand air filter, used by people with extreme allergic reaction. Um, actually, I want to tricorder some of the stuff here. This is the control for the special weapon that is holding the Enterprise. A force field prevents our access to the controls. Captain, my tricorder indicates that the force field controls can be neutralized in the station's security center. Alright, so I guess not in the... Uh, I guess it's not the uh, doomsday weapon after all. But releasing the Enterprise would still be a good thing. The device appears to be involved in genetic research, Captain. It inserts mutagens into genes and monitors their progress. The device is empty. I detect a great deal of augmentation in the creature's anatomy, Captain. I would suggest using a medical tricorder to analyze the creature, Captain. I would note that the force field surrounding the cage seems to be controlled from the ship's security section. That's the same as this force field, then. Why do I get the feeling it won't be possible to turn off just the one? My god, it's not just an Antarian man-killer. 
You should see some of the generic engineering they've done to it. They've actually made it deadlier. A formidable achievement in genetics, Doctor. Given that the species is renowned throughout the galaxy as one of the most powerful and dangerous predators in known space. There are reasons why the Federation monitors genetic research, and this thing is one of them. I guess so. Nothing on this tricorder, Captain. Okay, well, it uh, looks like we can't really do anything here. Not until we get that force field down. And hopefully... He'll just decide to take a nap or something when we come back. Oh, wait. Keep forgetting to interact with the characters. Dr. McCoy looks at the equipment, wondering when his services will be needed. Mr. Spock looks at the equipment, wondering when his services will be needed. If this description is the same for Kirk... James Kirk. He's a little hungry right now. No, that's a total non sequitur. You know, Jim, I really could have done without meeting this thing. Come on, Bones, it'll build character. I have quite enough character, thank you very much. Probably true. A most deadly beast. Almost as deadly as some of the predators on Vulcan. Almost? I don't think I want to go on vacation to Vulcan in that case. Nice looking animal. That's not the term I would use, but sure. Um, well, we can't get in there, so let's try to crew quarters instead. Rather cramped living quarters. Only a small step up from Klingon ships. No wonder the Klingons have such a bad temper. We'd better be quiet. There's a gentleman on the bed who might quarrel with us if we wake him up. Um, yeah. This is not what I would describe as cramped. <laughs> it is in fact a gigantic room. I guess it doesn't look particularly comfortable, but not cramped. Did the art uh, team not actually read the description? And yeah, there's this guy on the uh, bed here who might give us some trouble, so let's look into him first. A Vardane guard, currently asleep. Hopefully, he will stay asleep. Let's look why he's sleeping here. No wonder he's not on duty. He's suffering from cervix toxemia. He must have spent some time on Rigel 8. Think he'll get up? He's under heavy medication, Jim, but with Verdane physiology, you can never tell. Maybe we can uh, cure him, and then he'd be on our side. This will keep him unconscious. I can't cure him with a med kit. His infection is not easily treatable. I guess not, but we can at least make sure that he stays unconscious and will not bother us. Again, it is bad for your uh, score if you... Uh, if he does wake up and fight with you. The floor. This seems pointless. A bed. It appears to be designed for slightly larger than man-sized humanoids. Some dummies over here. Practice dummies for martial arts. Interesting. A target for laser firing practice. A small shifting holographic bullseye is certain to challenge even the most skilled marksman. Can we actually use that? We should only use force in places where it is necessary, Captain. Are you certain you have the correct target? It looks like you're a little off target, Jim. No, I guess not. Um, anything about those dummies or anything else? Nothing unusual about... I guess not. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Nothing there either. A food synthesizer. Another food synthesizer? Can we scan that? Nothing unusual about that. Kirk said he was hungry. Hmm. Seems to be broken. 
Hmm. Well, the executive one is working, but I guess it's not really that important. A very quiet James T. Kirk. Dr. McCoy, more subdued than usual. A stoic and silent Mr. Spock. Everybody's quiet. I had forgotten how Spartan the Vardane could be. An excellent analogy, Captain. The Vardane consider art to be an activity of limited utility at best, and subversive at worst. Well, you know art can be pretty damn strange, and it's human nature to fear what you don't understand. Vardane nature too, I guess. So they fear art? It's kind of weird. And I thought that our quarters in the Enterprise were cramped. They're not cramped. You could have, like, a social in this room. A full-blown gala. I wonder if there's anything here we can use. Well, the only thing that's really here are these dummies. You get no response. I was hoping there would be a funny message, but no. Can we get the dummies? The dummies are not easy to carry, but you manage. <laughs> we, we picked up all three somehow. Training dummies for martial arts practice. I guess they fit in our pockets somehow. Makes sense. Except, you know, it doesn't. Um, I do believe that is um, all in here. And since we can't get into Bridell's quarters, let's check out somewhere else. Well, we really need to get into the security room in order to, uh, in order to uh, disable the force field. And we need to get into the computer room probably to get um, information about uh, the about Bridell's plans, see if we can convince anybody to help us. So both of those are on this side. Oh! There they are! Get them! Fire! We have finally encountered some guards. Let's stun them. They also stunned McCoy. I hate when they do that. I don't know if it's possible to actually... To, uh, to actually shoot them before they stun anybody, but since they only use stun, it does not matter. It doesn't affect your score either. But I guess our presence has finally gone noticed. Let's see if we can get into the uh, security office Save new game. before... We do anything else? I'm just kind of curious. Replace pre This one should be the security offices, I believe, according to the map. This door is labeled security. The door is locked, Jim. Well, I didn't think it was going to be that easy. I guess we'll have to figure out a way to get in there in the next video.